Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a video of Flatsoid's perspective while he watches a video from Simon Dan. Watching a video of Flatsoid's perspective. Watching a video from Professor Dave. I want to give massive thanks to all of my supporting members and patrons. Thank you all so very much. So this all sounds very confusing. Flatsoid did a two hour stream unpicking a video that Simon Dan did that was unpicking a video that Flatsoid did that was unpicking a video that Professor Dave did. Zoid, I can see right up your nose. Just get on with it. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this. Let's get going. Uh, let's make sure it's showing. Yes, it is showing. Okay, guys, this is Simon Dam, the most ridiculous response you'll ever see from a flat Wait, back to the latest video, which, as I said at the start, is a flat earther's attempt at debunking Professor Dave. The flat earther in question is Flatsoid. Now, you may remember him from Flat Earth Fail 31, where he said he was going to make me look like an ignoramus. Of course, he did not. And that's usually what flat earther, well, Simon Dam does. He just makes a declaration and it's so guys i definitely showed you to be an ignoramus because you said we cannot show relative density i explained it to you very simply but it's fine we're gonna go through it again tonight oh yes relative density uh just because you say i did not doesn't make it so it just means you're ignoring the evidence simply as that okay let's go on well he sat down to try and debunk professor dave's video the 10 things that all flat earthers say that has a master whopping 5.7 million views. Wow. Because it's got so much views, it's now brilliant, guys. No, it's because it's pushed to a lot more people. Because he's got a wider audience to watch it. Because he doesn't get shadow banned and consented like the rest of us. All happiness to him for having that big, big audience. I do not have anything against that. It just sucks that he has to, to try and debunk the wrong flat earth. You know the same issue you guys have? You attack a flat earth narrative based on uh, controlled opposition? No Zoid, myself, Dan, Fi, Professor Dave and all the others attack flat earth based on the fact it has no supporting evidence. I think we'd better jump on in to the meat of your um, arguments. Community, most notably with this lengthy response to the Globe Busters. For about two months now, the comments section of that video has been a consistent hotbed of activity with hundreds of flat earthers stopping by to share their opinions. Wow, hundreds of flat earthers. Probably a lot of them are just sock accounts created to make it look that way, but yeah. It seems Flatsoid is not a fan of the Flat Earth community as a whole. Why would you put that in my mouth? I never said that. I just said it's so possible you guys create sock accounts to try and make Flat Earthers look stupid. You know like the sock accounts you guys have trolling Flat Earth channels like mine? Yeah. No, no, Zoid. We don't need to make sock accounts just to make Flat Earthers look stupid. Let's try and restructure that in another sentence. <sighs> Without containment, you cannot have gas pressure. So what's going on with the actual air around you then, Flatsoid? Because that's pressurized. It <laughs> Do you know you just... Guys, this is what I'm saying. He comes with his ignorance already. He's saying the Atmo is pressurized, guys. What is pressure again? Uh, Mr. Simon Dan, isn't, isn't pressure the force exerted on a container wall? Gas pressure is the pressure exerted by the gas on the walls of its container or any other surface. This room, if we increased the pressure and made it 20 psi, what would be the pressure against my hand? It's not a wall of this container. Show us where this has de been debunked several times because as far as I know, even on my channel, I have asked this for quite a few years now. 
Where's the demonstration for gas pressure not requiring containment? Every flat earther has asked this and we have not yet even had any other explanation other than gravity. The air in this room is at 14.7 psi. The gas on my hand is at 14.7 psi with no container separating it. The problem comes if you want to have the gas on the hand being 15 psi surrounded by 14.7. You then would need a container to maintain that differential. And yes, pressure gradient, you nugget. You nugget. Uh, pressure gradient is the delta after... Sorry, pressure gradient comes after pressure. Pressure cannot exist without the antecedent of a container. That's what pressure is. It's the force exerted on the container wall, on the surface of the container wall. Remember, it's surface area. Zoid, pressure is the force per unit area exerted on the walls of a container or any other surface. You require a surface to have surface area pressure. Yes, surface, not a wall. A wall is not the requirement to experience pressure. Very simple stuff. Um, then verbatim, without applying a shred of critical thinking. So now that I am intimately... Without a shred of critical thinking. That's all the flat earth is, guys. It's critical thinking. It means we do not just take consensus. We actually go and have logical thinking. We critical think. Hence why we don't believe in the globe. Hence why we can prove the globe is not true. Because it goes against critical thinking. It goes against reality. As I said, everyone, Dunning-Kruger. And Dan is absolutely right. Just think, seasons, eclipses, celestial navigation, stellar rotation, horizon drop, orbital mechanics, gravity, buoyancy, maps, and a thousand of one other things that the globe supports and can evidence, and that Flat Earth has no explanation and evidence for. I just told you the reason we are the logical thinkers is because we are not just following what we are conditioned to think you are indoctrinated to believe the globe and everything about it faith-based religion we have found it to be false therefore we are the logical thinkers because we are showing it wrong and giving you guys the reason why he's gonna say guys number one one extremely problematic side effect of taking the globe and flattening it out into a plane is that gravity makes no sense and there is no reason for things to fall to the ground all I sorry flat earthers never ever say that no they don't because otherwise they'd be arguing with themselves he's addressing gravity give him a charm Simon then same issue uh, Dave had um, Gravity is for the globe. It's not for the flat earth. Why do you bring gravity, the issues of gravity, to flat earth? Two different models, you understand? Zoe, do you even know why flat earthers originally started denying gravity? Because I bet you don't. There are two reasons. One, if the earth was a flat disk with gravitational forces, it would collapse into a ball. Two, if Earth was a flat disk with gravity, as you went towards the edge of the disk, you would have to lean over more and more and more, because the gravitational pull is towards the centre. It doesn't work with a flat Earth, so therefore you guys have to deny it. Let's say this is the globe model, this is the flat Earth. This one has the bullshit gravity. This one doesn't require gravity, it's got nothing to do with it. This one is reality, the one you are trying to debunk. Why are you putting this one's gravity to this? The problems you have on your globe has got nothing to do with the flat earth. Do you see the issue? Why do we have to fix the problems you have on the globe just because we call flat earth? This is why Zoid, you need an explanation for this. This is a globe storm and argument. Nothing to do with flat Earth, by the way. Well, it is, because without gravity, how do flat Earthers explain how things fall? It Very simple. Relative density disequilibrium. We've explained this how many times? Ah, yes. Relative density disequilibrium, which apparently explains why this tennis ball will fall 
when we let go of it because it is denser than the surrounding medium, the atmosphere. What you haven't ever been able to explain is why down. Density is not a vector. Oops. Again, gravity has nothing to do with flat earth. And the thing, because things fall, doesn't mean we have to replace gravity on your globe. Yes, Flatsoid, it does. To be a successful model, the flat earth model needs to explain all the observations that we make. The globe with gravity does. Flat Earth needs to explain it too. Objects accelerate towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an indisputable fact. Yes, and it's an indisputable for fact that we can prove its relative density to this equilibrium. Mm. Oh my days, not this rubbish again. Flatsoid. You cannot prove that. You just can't. Can't we prove that? Okay guys, let's move to another video. I actually went and did a demonstration, Mr. Simon Dan. This is a demonstration where I actually explain it in very simple terms. You know, we can actually do demonstrations. Can you do demonstrations? See, this is just a normal flask, well, container, plastic container with some water, tap water, so normal H2O. This is a plastic block, okay? I'm just gonna first empty it out because I put some money in there, some coins, so it can give it some weight. This block has density to it. Well, let's assume that your block is five centimeters along each side. So it's five by five by five, 25 cubic centimeters. And let's say that it weighs five grams. Density is mass divided by volume, which means that the density of that block as a system is 0.2 grams per cubic centimeter. Note, that doesn't tell you anything about any directions. It's the amount of mass divided by that volume. And that is all. What happens when I put this block into water? It gets wet. Huh, one of them has to be less dense. What do you know, it floats. So this plastic block is less dense than the um, water it's in. Obviously, you can also say, okay, even if it's a bit denser, it's maybe displacing the, the water around it, and that's why it's floating. Hmm. Zoid, this isn't difficult. That block weighs five grams. So it will push five grams worth of water out the way, which will be five cubic centimeters. The block is 25 cubic centimeters. Therefore, some of it remains above the water. It floats. So, you see it is less dense than the medium it is surrounded in. More dense than the air, so the air cannot support it. So that's why it drops, and it's l less dense than the water, so the water can support it. We have that block weighing five grams being pulled down. That block is displacing water. Water to the same mass of five grams, providing an opposing balanced force, the buoyant force. They are equal, so it floats. What happens now if I'm going to make this object denser? You ask me now, how are you going to make it denser? Because density is already set, it's per cube. Exactly, but you can make the system denser than the medium. So you're adding more weight. Remember, keyword more mass guys, into the system. Keyword, system. I'm opening it. System guys is the keyword. I'm opening it, you see? Yes, I have no problem with that. You're adding mass into the same volume, thus increasing its density. It's the equivalent of loading more and more cargo into a ship. I'm going to be adding the coins. This gives it more weight. I'm making the object, the system, denser. Yes, that's cool. Let's say that with your coins, the entire cube now weighs 30 grams. So its density is now 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter. Remember it floated a few seconds ago. What happens now? It's still denser than the air, so it's going to fall still, and now it's going to be denser than the water. Oh, is the water able to support it now? No, because the water is now less denser than the object. Remember, the density per cube is still the same, 
but the system is now denser. No, the density is not the same. The cube is 25 cubic centimetres. It originally had a mass of 5 grams. It now has a mass of 30 grams. The density was 0.2 grams per cubic centimetre. It is now 1.2 grams per cubic centimetre. That cube is displacing 25 cubic centimetres of water, weighing 25 grams, but the cube weighs 30 grams, so it wins. Gravity pulls it down because it can displace that water, because 25 cubic centimetres weighing 30 grams gets pulled down harder than 25 cubic centimetres weighing 25 grams. This ain't rocket science. This is why I was explaining when you put something of more substance together in the system, you make the system denser. And I think that's made it very clear, don't you guys understand? Oh yes, very clear. Remember, it cannot displace the water anymore. Because that's how Archimedes principle works. And no, it does not require gravity even though it's in the equation. Gravity is not a force. Zoid, I willingly admit that I'm not the best at math, but I know that you can't just throw one of the values away in an equation. The buoyant force equals rho gv, the density of the fluid times gravity times the volume displaced. I don't know if you're screwing with my mind. I mean, all this stuff about me doing a video about you doing a video about Simon Dan doing a video about you doing a video about Professor Dave. I mean, is, is this some sort of... Inception. It's simply the displacement 